My name is Justin Sanders. I'm a palliative care physician at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and the Serious Illness Care Program at Ariadne Labs. We developed a conversation guide for use in long-term care and other skilled nursing facilities to help health professionals communicate with patients and their families and other caregivers about coronavirus. This conversation guide supports health professionals to share meaningful information about the risks of COVID-19 and elicit worries and priorities that may inform shared decision-making and care planning in the event that the patient contracts COVID-19. In this short video, nurse practitioner Jennifer Giddings demonstrates the use of this guide in a telephone call to a patient's surrogate decision-maker. Ms. Giddings works at Fairview Nursing Home, a long-term care facility. Her patient is Mrs. Celine Jackson, a 75-year-old retired bank teller with advanced dementia, type 2 diabetes, and high blood pressure. Mrs. Jackson's husband, James, a retired city administrator, is her surrogate decision maker. Mrs. Jackson has been unable to participate in decisions regarding her care for approximately six months. Since the pandemic began, Mr. Jackson has been unable to visit his wife in the facility, though he has been able to see her from outside her window. Hello. Hi, my name is Jennifer Giddings. I'm a nurse practitioner at Fairview Nursing Home. May I speak with Mr. Jackson? This is Mr. Jackson. Is, is my wife okay? Yes, she's doing fine. How are you doing today? Good. <laughs> I was a little better now, thank you. This is a difficult and scary time because of the coronavirus. Hmm. We know that it is made worse by the need to be separated from family and friends. I wanted to speak with you because despite our best efforts, some of our staff and residents tested positive for coronavirus. Oh man, yes. I knew it. I, I, I knew that was gonna happen. I mean, it's, it's everywhere now. Yes, it's been spreading very quickly. Yeah. So I'm hoping we can talk about how to provide the best care for Mrs. Jackson if she became sick. Is that okay? Yep, yep, that's fine. So what have you heard about how the coronavirus might affect her health? Oh, it wouldn't be good. She's about the last person in the world that should be getting that bug. It's bad, it's a tough one, it, it would be bad. Yes. May I share with you my understanding of how the coronavirus could affect Mrs. Jackson's health? Yes, ma'am. Most people in nursing facilities who get the coronavirus get better on their own. Mm. But if they become very sick, people who live in nursing facilities are less likely to survive. I know yeah. this is a hard thing to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I'd like to make sure that we continue to provide Mrs. Jackson with the best care possible. This includes talking about whether or not to send her to the hospital if she became very sick. Can I ask some questions to help us think about that? Yeah, yes. Tell me about some things that are important in her life. Oh, important. Uh, <laughs> everything. <laughs> she's, you know, she's one of those people. Uh, everything. She's a uh, people. They say she's vibrant. And that's that's right. Uh, let's mm -hmm. see. Gardening. She's a gardener. Uh, church. Her church. Two, three times a week she goes to church. Or you know, used to before she got sick and stuff. Uh, Grandkids, of course. Um, let's see what else? Um, musicals. <laughs> I, she loves musicals. I think we've seen about every musical ever made. So, what's her favorite? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, let's see. Um, <clears throat> the King and I. Oh. Yeah. That's a really good musical. It is. It's a, it's a good one. Fun one. Mm -hmm. So. What are you most worried about right now with the coronavirus? I'm worried that my wife would get it mm -hmm. and probably 
probably not survive it. And she, she'd be alone. I could, she'd be alone and I couldn't, couldn't hold her hand. That's what I'm worried about. 100% understandable. And we do have some protocols in place that I will like to speak with you about later on. Okay. okay. So if she became very sick due to the coronavirus, how much would Mrs. Jackson be willing to go through to try to get better? What do you mean? I... Well, some people would want any treatment to survive, even if it was unlikely to work. Others would want to stay here with treatment focused on comfort, even if they might not survive. My wife is a fighter. Mm -hmm. She is a fighter and she would want to do everything she can and she would do everything she can and she'd want the doctors to do everything they can to help her out. That's how she is. This can be hard to talk about and it is so helpful for us to know what matters most for Mrs. Jackson's care at this time? Yeah. I've heard you say Ms. Jackson loves her grandchildren, loves musicals, and she's a fighter. Yep. Keeping this in mind and given the treatments we can provide at Fairview, I recommend that we provide as much supportive care as possible here at Fairview Nursing Home. But send Mrs. Jackson to the hospital to receive additional treatment if necessary. We can also let the hospital know if there are certain treatments she would want to avoid. Is that okay? Yes, that makes sense. That makes, that's, that's the plan. Yes, that makes sense. Okay. We will do everything we can to help Mrs. Jackson and your family through this. Thank you, Jennifer. So let's go over some of those protocols for visitation. Okay, sounds good. In this video, nurse practitioner Jennifer Giddings demonstrated one scenario in which this conversation can occur. The conversation can occur with patients or surrogates in the presence or absence of known COVID-19 cases in the facility. We have assembled a tip sheet that can reinforce successful use of the conversation guide in practice. These tips include the following. To prepare for the conversation, when planning to speak with a caregiver, review the patient chart or examine the patient in advance so you can provide an up-to-date clinical assessment. Review the currently available supportive treatments in the facility, for example, oxygen, intravenous fluids, or antibiotics, so you have a sense of what is possible to provide there. Review the latest facility policies for infection control, visitation, safety, and transfer. Consider arranging a video call if possible because these conversations can be easier to have by video than by telephone. To prepare to use the conversation guide, watch this demo video of the conversation. Read the guide aloud slowly. When working with interpreters, review, plan, and guide with the interpreter beforehand to discuss potential challenges. During the conversation, Use the exact words on the conversation guide to reduce your cognitive load. Use silence and acknowledge emotions when they arise. After the conversation, document what you heard, including information about what is important to patients and their treatment preferences. Never struggle alone. Debrief with a colleague for support and self-care. The Serious Illness Care Program has developed a COVID-19 response toolkit which includes conversation guides and implementation tools for health professionals in a variety of settings, training resources for health systems, and patient resources, such as the patient guide. This guide for long-term care and nursing facility residents, their family and caregivers can be found in this toolkit. This list of websites takes you to COVID-19 resources for the Serious Illness Care Program at Ariadne Labs, Vital Talk the Center to Advance Palliative Care, and the Conversation Project. It also includes resources from the Centers for Disease Control and ACP Decisions to assist patients and their families in protecting themselves and others from infection. This is a difficult and uncertain time. You are in our thoughts, and we hope that you and your loved ones stay safe and well. Thank you.